Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to create this wooden bucket. So let's dive right in. Let's start off by adding a circle. So press Shift A, go to Mesh and add a circle. In the left bottom menu, change the vertices to 8. And then press Tab to go into Edit Mode and press E and set and extrude it up. And press S and scale it up. Then with your tilde key, or a 1 on your numpad, go into front view and press set and toggle x-ray. Press 2 or this icon here to go to edge select. Select all the side edges and press ctrl B and bevel it. And then press X and F to delete the faces. Press set and toggle x-ray again. Press tab to leave edit mode. Go to your modifiers tab, add a modifier and add a solidify modifier. And then we'll change the thickness so it just about touches each other. There we go. Then press Shift A, Mesh, and add another circle. Tap the gun to edit mode, F to fill, E to extrude it up, S and scale it up a tiny bit. Then A to select all, and then S and Shift set and scale it down. That. Tap to leave edit mode, go back into front view, press Shift D and Z, and then tap to go into edit mode, press A to select all, S and Shift Z and scale it up, and then we can press S and Z and maybe scale it up a bit in the Z axis as well. There, press tap to leave edit mode, Shift D to duplicate, and then Z and move it up, and then we'll place it there. So I have to go back into edit mode, S and shift set to scale it up. There we go. Then we select both of these rings. Press tab to go into edit mode. Press 7 on your numpad to go into top view or go through your view menu. And then Z and toggle X-ray. Go into face select by pressing 3 or the icon here. And then we select all the faces there. And then we press I and we inset. And then we can press X and F to delete all these faces. And then go into edge select. And then we'll select these two edges with shift. Press F to fill. Select the side F edge. And then just continue pressing F to fill. Do the same for the button ring. Select those two, fill, and then select the side edge. And repeatedly hit F so it fills everything. And then we can toggle X-ray. And there we go. Press A to select all. Press R, Z, and then 22.5 to rotate it a tiny bit. And then go into front view. And then we'll go and select the bucket. Tap to go into edit mode. And with edge select, we'll select this top edge and then on the other side, that top edge. And then we'll go back into front view and then we'll move it up with G and Z. And here you can kind of just be creative and move it up as much as you want. And then S and X and we'll scale it on the X axis a tiny bit. It keeps the angle. There we go. Now with these edges still selected, press Ctrl B and then V. Then we can bevel these corners here and then we'll use the scroll wheel to add more bevel lines and then we'll make it nice and round there we go that looks great then we can press tab to leave edit mode and then add modifier and we'll add a bevel we'll change the segments in the bevel to four and then the amount of bevel maybe to 0 0.04 and then we can press ctrl 2 and add a subdivision modifier and then right click on our object and shade out of smooth um, I feel like I can increase the size of these two a tiny bit so I'll select them in edit mode and then scale them up a tiny bit I like the rings a bit bigger always change this back if we don't like it okay then we'll select one of the rings and then we'll add a bevel modifier here as well we'll change the segments to four and then maybe the amount to 0 0.02 and then right click shade smooth and then we'll select the bottom 
and then hold shift, select the bottom ring and then hold shift and select the top ring last. Press Ctrl L and then P to copy the modifiers to the other objects as well. Right click and shade those smooth as well. There we go. Let's uh, create the handle now. So press Shift A, Mesh, and we'll add a cube. P and Z, move it up, tap to go into edit mode, and then we'll scale it down. And then S and X, and we'll scale it up on the X axis. And then G and Z, then we'll move it in position a tiny bit. Now if we press Ctrl 3, we'll add a subdivision modifier. And then we tab into edit mode and then Ctrl R, we can add a loop cut and then we can increase the loop cuts with our mouse wheel. So we'll add four loop cuts. And then with face select, select this loop by holding Alt and then we press S and X and we scale up this part a bit. And then G and Z and we'll move it up a tiny bit. So it creates a tiny bit of a handle. Then we'll select this face, go to the other side, hold shift, select the other face, press I to inset. And then we'll inset that face like that. And then we can right click and shade smooth. And there is our handle. So now if we look from the top and we select the bottom, tab into edit mode, select the top face, press shift D, Make sure you duplicate it just the top face and then press P and then separate by selection. Tap to leave edit mode and then select the new object. Make sure you have the new object selected. There we go. And then we tap into edit mode and then we extrude it up. And then we also scale it up. There we go. And then with the top face selected, we press I to inset there and then with Control r we'll add three loop cuts and then right click to confirm with the edge select active like this loop hold shift select that loop and then press g and z move that up a tiny bit and then we can remove the bevel modifier and press Control 3 to add a subdivision modifier and then set to toggle x-ray and then we can add a loop cut here on the side move it up move on down and then we'll add some extra loop cuts on every side there we go and then if you want it to be higher you can always just press s z and then scale it up with the z axis and g and z to move it up a tiny bit there we go okay then now we'll add our camera so go into front view and then press shift a and then add the camera and then press g and y move it back I press zero on your numpad or through your view menu go into camera view go into your output settings change the resolution to 1920 by 1920 uh, select your bucket and then we can move it down a bit and then press r twice and we can rotate it a bit and maybe yeah, it's a nice rotation and press shift a mash edit plane press r x 90 to rotate it and then with g and y we can move it back and then go into edit mode and scale it all the way up so it covers your camera background there perfect then uh, we'll start adding the lighting so if we press Z and we go into rendered view, we can um, start adding some lights. So press Shift A, a light, and add an area light. Press period key and then change your pivot point to 3D cursor. Press R, X, 90 on your light. And then we'll have to rotate it the other way. So press R, X, 180. GY and move it back behind your object and then we'll change this size so it covers the camera view and then we can change our power maybe to a thousand maybe even a bit more 1500 we'll start with that shift a a light and add an area light G and Z to move it up and then we'll press RX 45 and then RZ60 minus and then we can see how it 
spines and then maybe we want to rotate it a bit on the z-axis change the power to 200 see how that looks in our camera view maybe a bit too sharp and we can just rotate it by pressing r and x twice there i think that is a nice angle and maybe just decrease the power a tiny bit for now and then we'll press shift d rz 120 and rx twice and then we can move that one there maybe rotate it a bit from this side and we'll move it back a bit as well maybe i'll change the size to three and the uh, shape the disc do the same for this one change the shape the disc and size to three there yeah that looks uh looks great and then we'll add a light for our background so press shift a and add another area light rx90 gy move it back change our shape to disc change the size to three and then the power maybe to 500 and then let's see how that looks uh, change it to 750 yeah that looks great okay then we'll start adding our materials so we'll start with our background select the background go to the material tab add a new material we'll name it a background oh i have kept logged on there we go there we go perfect face color change it to abe one e7 then we'll do our metal so select one of the rings add a new material called metal we'll change our base color to cdf 5 ff and then we can change here metallic to one select the bottom ring hold shift select the top ring press ctrl r l and m to link the materials now we'll start adding our wood material for that we'll go into our shading tab and here we can uh, just go into camera view as well press set and go into rendered view and then we'll select our bucket we'll add a new material let's call it bucket okay and then here we'll add a musgrave and then we'll add a mapping and a texture coordinate so connect the texture coordinate to the mapping and the mapping to your musgrave press shift a and add a noise texture connect that one to the musgrave and then we'll add a color ramp there we go and add that to the base color there we go and then here we can see our new pattern so we're going to change the scale a tiny bit so it looks a tiny bit more like wood so i want to scale it a bit in the z axis so if you look at that there we go and i already think that looks much much better um, so then I'll just go and change the colors of our color ramp so we can see how it looks with colors. I'll change the black color in to 5B433F and then our light color will be FFCB97. There we go. Then we'll select our handle, shift click on the bucket. And then we'll press Ctrl L and then M to link our material. Here we see that we kind of want to change the scaling. So with the handle selected, we click here and we'll duplicate the material and we can call it handle. And then we can play around a bit with scaling of this one. So let's see if we change the Z scaling a bit. And We'll change the Y a tiny bit and then the X as well. There, I think that looks pretty good. Just play around with your own scaling and see that it looks good. Okay, then we can go back into our layouts and then we'll... Got there. And then we will add on water material. So select the water, add a new material. We'll call it a water. And then we'll change our base color to 88D 
four ff then we want to change the roughness to zero and then the transmission to all the way to one there we go and then i'm also going to go and change the world set color so if you go to our world tab we'll change the color to 9f96c4 and now I want to add a nice little light here as well. So the water reflects a tiny bit of that light. So if we press shift a light and we'll add an area light, press G and set, we'll move it up and then maybe rotate it a bit and then move it a tiny bit closer. There, I think that is enough. Now if we go to our render settings and we scroll down to color management, we can change the look to medium high contrast. And there it is. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or requests, drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to see your results, so tag me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. See you soon.